from EPAWA Weather Consulting, headquartered in Worth Whitehall, Pennsylvania. This is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Good Sunday morning to another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 16th. We have a winter storm heading toward the region that we're going to discuss in this video in the beginning. So for those of you who are just here for that, you can jump off if you want. But there's also uh, some longer term threats that we talk about uh, in these videos every single Sunday throughout the winter season. So uh, this is looking at the long range outlook primarily. But if we have anything uh, short term, we discuss that first. Uh, so we will do that today. Uh, I have a different setup here today with a new computer. Uh, it's a has a uh, uh, for those of you who know what you're what you're talking about with it as far as graphics cards concerned. It has a uh, GeForce RTX 3080. So this thing is lightning fast uh, and very good. Uh, so we're going to have uh, the ability to live stream a lot better in 1440p as opposed to just doing the standard definition or whatever nonsense was going on when we tried it before. I do plan on having a now, uh, now casting live stream this evening at 8 o'clock. So we will do that this evening. Yes, I know it's the same time the Steelers are on, but, uh, you know, uh, I have to. I, I, storms don't uh, wait for, for football games to be over, unfortunately. Uh, but with that being said, go birds, okay? Hopefully uh, I'll be in a good mood <laughs> later today, uh, but I doubt it. I, I'm expecting a, expecting a, a loss, but, uh, hey, you never know, right? Okay, so let's start with the, uh, since I got three monitors going here, this is going to take some some getting used to. So I got one here, one here, one here, actually a fourth up here on the uh, on the wall that has the radar. So there's, with the TV, so there's, it's crazy. Uh, so there, here's the uh, snow that's going to be coming in first. That is, uh, that has been unanimously shown on, on everything. The NAM was not on board with this uh, event until basically just this morning. Okay, it had some very... Uh, it was. It wasn't really interested in the snow part of it. It went right over to freezing rain. The warm air advection was uh, was very strong on the on the NAM. I don't see that being an issue now as much. It's going to be uh, maybe three, four, maybe five hours of snow, and then you have a changeover to freezing rain for about an hour, maybe two at the most, and then you go right to rain. Okay, so it's going to be a pretty quick transition. Here's that. As I put that in motion, is it going to go? There we go. We'll put this in motion. You can see it moving from south to north, and you get the front end snow here and a thump of snow, if you will. Then you get a transition. It's just a thin, tr uh, thin transition to freezing rain, but look at all the rain coming in. That changes over, and the temperatures go up to the 40s in these southeastern areas, uh, certainly. So it's going to kind of wash away everything that did fall. So uh, whatever you have, uh, the, as far as travel issues, are going to be this evening, I think, most likely. Uh, the transition occurs on either side of midnight from south to north. And uh, it's going to be a little bit further, further south when you get down here by Philadelphia. That's why you're not getting much there. A little bit of snow, and then you get this transition. I wouldn't be surprised if Philadelphia ended up with uh, a little more than uh, we have projected. But, I mean, other than that, it looks like it's pretty uh, pretty cut and dry, and everything kind of just goes away. Then you have some wraparound snow showers, flurries, as the temperature falls Monday morning and afternoon. Uh, these aren't a real big deal. Maybe like a coating to a half inch, or maybe some spots get an inch out of it on the back end. And that's it. Those are just wraparound snow showers. So as far as our map goes, we're not changing anything this morning. Nothing. Uh, this We put this map out on Friday night. The only thing we changed on Saturday is we narrowed these top two ranges. Instead of uh, 12 to 16, we made it 10 to 14. And the B range all the way out here went from 6 to 12 to 6 to 10. That's it. We didn't change anything else. And because we waited and weren't trying to be the first to put something out, it was these crazy amounts of snow that you've seen uh, elsewhere. Uh, this is, you know, why we wait. This is this, there's no rush in this. Okay, we still put it out Friday night. If you can't plan from Friday night to Sunday night with 48 hours notice, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, you don't need to put it out 96 hours in advance, 100 hours in advance, with some outrageous amounts of snow of 12 to 18 inches or whatever else was forecasted by some of these uh, even major outlets. And it's not even just like the random Facebook pages on on you know that, that are out there. I'm talking about major outlets putting this out, which was a little uh, premature and disgraceful, in my opinion. But hey, that's their that's their problem. We're going to do what we do. We're going to do us, okay? And that's what we're going to continue to do uh, going forward. Now, uh, the NAM, as far as snowfall, now, again, I have three monitors here. 
So I got to figure out how to do this. Okay, so here's here's the new NAM run that went this morning. It's not going to be completely centered because I don't have this uh, set up that way to have it centered. But you get the general idea. Here's there, here's your snowfall. This area in here, we have a 1 to 3 valley locations, even in the northeast PA or 1 to 3. You might be closer to the 3, but you're still in that 1 to 3 range. And then it's focusing on the higher elevations for a little bit more. It goes all the way back here into, into the central PA. And uh, this is all in the 6 to 10 range that we have uh, for parts of like State College and places like that, uh, we'll, uh, just north of Williamsport, and uh, out here is where your highest amounts are. So if you look at our, uh, if I get rid of this, uh, move this back. If you look at our map, that's exactly what we have. There, there's no variation there anymore. The NAM was saying we were too high, actually. Well, we were, people were saying we were lowballing it. Uh, well, we weren't lowballing it, but the NAM's not uh, no longer in disagreeing with our map. So all of them are, it came in line with everything else. All of them are showing the same general idea. So there's no changes to that. Now let's switch gears to the long range. Uh, and this is, this was put out Thursday night this week because I just didn't have time on, I knew I was going to have time on Friday. So I did it Thursday evening. There's no difference between me putting it out Thursday night, 12 hours early and Friday morning. Although I had some uh, some that thought that that was going to be a big difference in long range. It's not. When we're talking about long range forecasting going five to six weeks into the future, uh, you know, 12 hours isn't going to make a big deal. That's like a, 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 you know, very short period of time in comparison to the, in relation to the uh, time frame we're talking about here. So these, uh, the projections for the, for the temperatures here are going to be kind of up and down for the next couple of days. Okay. We have this, uh, te the, the surge coming tonight. Then we're going to get colder again Monday, remain cold Tuesday. Wednesday, we have a cold front, reinforcing cold front that's going to move through. So you get near average temperatures, maybe near to slightly above, actually. You might get into the 40s in some places, lower 40s ahead of that front. Then that front moves through, uh, Wednesday night, maybe a rain or snow shower with that. Not a big deal. And then we go to the, for a 10 day period of below to well below average temperatures. And it's going to be cold, okay? Uh, there's no sugarcoating this. There's no two ways around this. This it, It's going to be cold, and it's going to remain cold. Highs, uh, you know, are, are going to be no better than the 20s for, for about 10 straight days, okay? So it's going to be cold. We do start to climb out at, very, at the very tail end of the month. We start to climb out of it and just go to slightly below average, okay? And then same thing. Much of the first half of February looks like it's going to be that as well. Uh, but our monthly projection for January after having... Warm temperatures in December are now minus four to minus six for the monthly average mean temperature. So it's going to be cold. Uh, and that's even with the first two days with temperatures that were, were spiked. Remember, it was like almost 60 degrees or it was in the 60s in some areas uh, the, around the first or second. I think both of those days starting off very warm. Uh, obviously, that was erased and reversed. And now we're going to just continue to tank here uh, going forward. So. Uh, January snowfall, we still have listed as slightly above average. And some of you are like, well, this isn't going to get you to slightly uh, above average, even with the snow that happened last week. Uh, you combine these two, it's still not slightly above average. And you're right. This is what slightly above average is. This is it. Okay. At our uh, different locations that we have across the region. So uh, our climate sites, this is our major climate sites. This is what you sh should expect in January for an average. And we still think it's going to be slightly above average. Why? We still have more storm signals. Uh, there's two that we're listing in this long range outlook here on Thursday evening. I don't get to it. There we go. Uh, two storm signals. We got one at the 22nd to 24th. That's actually favoring the 22nd of that period. Uh, this was listed for a couple weeks. So this is not a surprise that the models are now showing something there. And the winter storm signal between the 28th and 31st, as we start to transition from brutally cold to just cold. <laughs> so at that point, there's another winter storm signal. Some of the ensembles are, are identifying that period as well. So uh, this is something we've identified. I just added that last one, but we had the 20th to 20 or 22nd to 24th period in there uh, for a couple of weeks already. So this is something we've see, uh, foresaw coming. And those are going to be more chances for the rest of the month that can get you to slightly above average. So if you d did not get anything out of this one, there's still things in the pipeline. There's things down the road that we can look at. Uh, as far as I'm going to touch on this briefly, the Enso, uh, the, the La Nina in the equatorial eastern Pacific is still uh, pretty much unchanged from last week. It did warm in the in the uh, eastern Nino regions closest to the Peruvian coast, but this is just a week to week variation that hasn't really changed. We are eventually going to head out of La Nina, head towards and so neutral uh, at the very tail end of winter, heading into spring. So it's still looking like that's on track, but uh, right now we're still in a weak La Nina territory. Okay, so that's still on track. The sea surface temperatures, there it is, uh, the graphically where it is uh, as far as it's a basin wide event leaning east. 
as far as the coldest waters, which is the same thing we had in 2018, which is our analog season, 27, 2018. So no big changes there uh, week to week. And this looks pretty much similar to what we have here. So there's really no uh, difference. It's following a 2017, 2018 kind of uh, winter. Uh, and the Madden Julian Oscillation is in Phase 8 moving into the Circle of Death, which is right in the middle. What the Circle of Death means is that the convection along the uh, along the equator globally uh, near the Tropical Convergence Zone is not dominant in any specific region. Uh, it's coming from a Phase 8, which is good. So you'll have Phase 8 effects lingering where you have this deep trough. We're going to have that between the 20th and 29th. There's a really big deep trough uh, and ridging in the western United States. This is going to happen. Uh, as a result of that lag effect. If you go from phase 8 into the circle of death, you have lingering effects of phase 8 continuing, and that's what's going to end up happening through the end of the month. And it doesn't look like it's going to move for these through the end of the month at all. It's because it's going to remain in the circle of death. So no change to the pattern. It just means the uh, the pattern is not uh, affected or manipulated by the Mount Julian Oscillation. That's all that means. So the jet stream, whatever it's at now, probably continues. And we can see that here on the uh, downstream, downstream upper air pattern. That started off with our storm here. Uh, look at that. You just get a deep trough here that just sits here and just builds and builds and builds and builds and doesn't budge. It just gets worse uh, during that week that I talked about or week to 10 day period. So it just stays cold and uh, we will have a couple storm threats after that point. Here's what the temperatures are looking like uh, for that same period. See, it's another brutal shot of cold air coming in here and then it just remains cold, cold. This is going right through the end of the month here and it doesn't budge. Maybe at the very tail end of the month, once you go into the 30, 31st, it's just slightly below, but it's still it's still below average, all right? So it is what it is, okay? It is what it is. And uh, it is January, and everybody keeps saying, well, it is January, and it's supposed to be cold in January. Yeah, well, this is, a, this is anomalously, this is showing anomalies. This is compared to what average should be. So if you're below average already in the coldest climatological part of the year, of the entire year, that's still notable because it's colder than it should be even in the coldest point of the year okay so uh keep that in mind when we're talking about this we're just not talking about well yeah no kidding january's cold but it's going to be colder relative to normal averages in january even so uh let's get to the storm signals here or well uh, let me should show you graphically one one thing here just as our centermost point lehigh valley international airport just showing you that there is uh some uh, this is where the drop is. Here's your your one day ahead of the front spike in temperatures, and then temperatures just, just plummet and just remain below 30, it looks like, for uh, through at least the 27th here. It does have it going at low 30s, but this is still below average here, okay? So it's going to be cold for no matter how, how you look at it. And this is our centermost point. You, you know, north and south are going to have some variation, but this is our cold period, and it's definitely coming. So that's what made us change our... Um, already cold projections for January to make it a brutally cold projection for the remainder of January. Again, I got three monitors here, so I'm trying to figure this out as I go. Okay, so storm signals. Now, this is interesting because we have this uh, cold front coming through on Wednesday evening, okay? At the very tail end of the cold front, there's a little area of low pressure that the models are forming along that. Uh, so... Uh, and it cuts, cuts right across the Gulf of Mexico, pulls up moisture, and then rides that eastern seaboard northeastward. This is the European model last night. The Canadian model did something similar, okay? Uh, here is, as I put this in motion, watch this. Cold front goes through, and that's the reinforcer shot. Then we get brutally cold. A little area low pressure is going to form right at the tail end of this boundary. And they move across here and move up the coast. That's what it's showing. And look at that. See that? And you get a snow event here. Uh, this would be Saturday, Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night time frame, okay? Uh, this is the European model here. The, the Canadian model is showing something very similar. The GFS is showing it too. It's just a little too too far east and progressive with it at the moment, okay? Uh, and for it being six days away, uh, this is that's, that's normal for the GFS to do that. It's a progressive bias model. Uh, you know, the fact that it's further east does not surprise me one bit. Could it end up east and miss? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, but this is the storm signal. When we talk about storm signals, we're talking about a storm favorable in this time frame, but it doesn't guarantee a direct hit necessarily. As we saw with this particular storm hitting today, this was a storm signal we had for a month. It's hitting not everywhere, not everywhere. These people down here are like, well, there's that storm signal going to work out. Well, it did. It's just not in your backyard. We have more of our coverage area than just your backyard. Okay, we get that a lot. Uh, same people saying, why are you going to storm mode down here? Okay, because we cover this area too, and they're getting a pretty decent storm. 
so you know we'll watch this uh, this signal here. This is the first one. This is the 22nd to 24th time frame we have in our long range outlook. And then there's another one between the 28th and 31st, and you see several waves here in the vicinity. This is on the GFS ensemble. European ensemble is doing the same thing. You got a couple waves moving through here in that same time frame. So there'll be another signal in that time frame as well. Again, we identified this before the ensembles even had anything. So, um, you know, now it's starting to show a few blips here of, of, of uh, precipitation. So there are more chances. That's the bottom line. There are more chances going forward for winter uh, wintry weather. Today is only January 16th. We have another at least half of winter, more than half of winter to go. So uh, just don't be discouraged if you're in one of these areas down here. You're below average snowfall for the year. I get it. Uh, maybe you're a snow lover and you want it. Uh, there's more opportunities down the pipeline. Doesn't mean they're going to be guarantees, but at least there's a chance. Uh, and especially since we're going to be so cold, uh, you know, it's not going to take as much to do that. Uh, so we're going to uh, just summarize this here, keep it rather short this week, because uh, there's really not a lot to talk about, except I have to focus on the short term stuff uh, that we're doing today and, and stay on top of that. Uh, snow arrives this evening, then transition to sleep, freezing rain, then rain from south to north. Windy conditions overnight as this transition occurs. Uh, we're watching multiple threats over two different winter storm signal periods beyond this system with at least the opportunity or potential for a bigger storm if a track is favorable. That's still an if, but at least the signal is there, the storm's there. We just have to worry about track, and we'll do that throughout the week. And January will remain well below average regardless if you have any storm threats or not. I do want to put this... Uh, this uh, loop here, again, just so you can see it, uh, there it is. Uh, you got snow coming in this evening, early evening, in fact, and then it transitions uh, late evening uh, to uh, just after midnight from south to north. Then you get a little bit of rain behind it. Uh, then you get a lull. Tomorrow morning shouldn't really be too much, doing too much except maybe a few lingering snow showers, flurries, and that will continue throughout the day. Uh, the biggest thing with the overnight threat, as I, as I think, is as far as power outage is concerned, is going to be a wind surge that's going to come in between, say, 9, 10 o'clock and about 5 o'clock in the morning, but only at a, only about 2 to 4 hours at any given location. Okay, it's going to move with this warm air advection. As this starts to change over, you're going to get windy as the low-level jet's moving through. That's what's causing this changeover, the warm air advection. So when that changeover occurs, uh, you're going to have a windy period, 25 to 35 miles per hour, uh, with gusts 40 to 45. All right, so uh, some peak gusts in the Poconos could get up, get up to 50. Uh, during that, but again, it's only two to three hours at any given location, and then they die down as soon as that low-level jet moves through. Uh, but that wind—it's during that window from uh, mid to late evening through late in the overnight from south to north as this moves northward, and that uh, when that changeover occurs is when it the uh, wind accompanies that. So you'll know that it's probably changing over when you see the wind shift and the winds increasing. Okay, and one more time, there's our map. Uh, for today, again, no changes since we put this out on Friday, except very minor changes out in these areas to narrow ranges. Everywhere else remains the same, and we are not changing anything with timing or amounts today uh, for any of our projections. So it's going to remain as called, and this is what it's going to be through the end of the storm. That's this edition for weather, of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 16th. So once again, next week, maybe we'll be talking about some more storm signals and whether they come to fruition or not, we'll see throughout the week. But uh, you know, we got a long way to go for winter yet, so just don't be discouraged, um, you know, because there are some things down the line, even in February, uh, first half of February, slightly below average for the most part. So we have opportunities in the pipeline. And February is interesting because we actually have slightly above average precipitation. So if it's colder than average, uh, you have a good shot at some getting some snow in February as well as is usually the case most years. So I will uh, end it here. Uh, again, I'll have the live stream this evening at 8 p.m. It's going to be a Nowcast live, live stream to see where we are uh, observationally move forward and what our expectations are at that point. Take care.